I invite our visionary leader, Dr. Sister Jacinta Quadras, to greet you all and present her message for this webinar. Sister, I welcome you. Good afternoon and a warm welcome to each one of you to this three-day international webinar on impact of physics on healthcare, organized by the Department of Physics, Maristella College, Vijayawada, in collaboration with Mtron Technologies, Mumbai. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome our distinguished resource persons, Dr. Y.S. Rao from Mumbai and Dr. Rajkumar from Germany. Thank you for consenting to be the resource persons for this webinar. Physics touches every aspect of our lives. It has refined our understanding of the universe from the microscopic level of particles to the macroscopic level of space and has modernized our lifestyle. Modern comforts and conveniences such as television, computers, smartphones, aircraft and telecommunications, which have drawn people across the world closer together are based on concepts from physics. As the brochure mentioned, many of the greatest inventions in modern medicine, such as medical imaging, design of clinical diagnostic tools, sensors for implantable and wearable devices have all been developed by physicists. In addition to this utilitarian aspect, there is the philosophical aspect that motivates many scientists. A proper understanding of our physical universe provides us with a sense of humility and our helplessness in the face of the enormity of our universe. Such a feeling of smallness is also supported by the conservation laws that biology and physics interact has been discovered by J.C. Bose. In consciousness with the trail set by Bose, I'm sure that the deliberations of this webinar will provide delegates with an understanding of biosensors and bioinstrumentation for health tracking applications. Young students and scholars who aspire for PhDs and postdoctoral degrees will also benefit from this webinar as it will give them a fair idea of the new and promising areas for higher education for fellowships and scholarships to pursue higher studies both within the country and abroad. I'm very pleased that the Department of Physics has taken the initiative to organize a webinar on an area of such relevance here. So much critical development is going on. I hope everyone continues to be happy learners to become tomorrow's experts. I congratulate Dr. Little Flower, Head Department of Physics, and all the faculty members of the Department of Physics for organizing this three day webinar in collaboration with Mtron Technologies Mumbai. I wish every participant success. Wish you all the best. Thank you, and have a nice day. Thank you so much, sister, for your loving and kind wishes. We wish and pray that all your wishes for our institution and for this world will be realized with God's amazing grace. Current weather at Vijayawada is highly unpredictable. Yesterday, it was downpouring. The entire day was dark and there was no electrical power supply. Nature taught us the impact of physics in remote sensing generation and associated problems in the distribution of electricity. But the number of registered participants for this webinar brighten up our day with hope and bright smiles. And we find everything is good today for the conduction of this webinar. Maristella College is situated at the heart of Vijayawada in Andhra Pradesh with the vision empower, enrich, excel and transform, Maristella has been providing higher education for women since 1962. The world's knowledge economy requires a skilled workforce 
and cadre of leaders to address the many challenges and needs facing companies, governments, and societies worldwide. Many of the challenges we face today are new, like our COVID-19 situation, and there will undoubtedly be others arise in the future that will require innovative approaches and solutions to overcome them. The quality of healthcare system and services in the society is one such essential need and considered as one of the crucial factors to tackle the situations. This webinar initiated with such interdisciplinary approach and the deliberations of this webinar will explain the impact of such disciplines in healthcare by explaining the latest diagnostic techniques and also how best faculty members could prepare graduates for higher education, future employment, and leadership positions. So have a wonderful afternoon with us and empower, enrich, excel, and strive for transformation of individuals and society. Now I invite Ms. P. Padmalata from the Department of Physics to introduce one of the renowned person, knowledge wise, and very compassionate person, and one of the well wishes of Marie Stella to the August gathering. A very good afternoon to the entire virtual gathering. I take the pleasure of introducing today's keynote speaker, Dr. Y. Srinivas Rao, a very humble personality who always accepts our invitation, a highly knowledgeable person who will be always on the leading edge to share his expertise with others and who always renders his support and guidance to Maristella Institution. Dr. Y.S. Rao is currently working as Vice Principal and Dean of R&D at Sardar Patel Institute of Technology, Andheri West, Mumbai. Besides that, he is an eminent entrepreneur and he has his own industry by the name Emtron Technologies. He designs, develops, and distributes embedded systems to the market. He also trains the students in this field, and his students win titles and recognition at global level. Prior to become vice principal, he was the professor and head of the electronics and telecommunication department. He has a teaching experience of 28 years at Sardar Patel Institute of Technology. He holds a PhD degree from IIT Bombay and is a recognized PhD guide from Mumbai University who guided many scholars to obtain doctoral degree. Besides maintaining high academic profile, he is equally passionate in research and development also. Embedded systems, digital power electronics, VLSI design and wireless sensor networks are his research areas of interest. He has nearly 50 research papers to his credit, which were published in various reputed national and international journals. He has submitted seven patents, also consultant and corporate trainer to companies like Dan Technocraft Ethiopia, Johnson & Johnson Santa Cruz, Siemens Information Systems Limited, LNT are few to mention. He delivered many expert lectures at various short-term teachers training programs and conducted short-term courses for UG and PG students. Sir also received an honorable mention award by IEEE Computer Society, Washington, DC, USA at the International Design Competition for the project Shift Doc. He designed nearly 14 courses and programs funded by reputed industries and MHRD. DST IEDC project, Modrops development of advanced microwave and fiber optic lab, DST IEDC for the project hot to cold energy saving are few to mention. Hearty welcome to you, sir, to this three day international webinar. So we really feel honored to have you with us through this virtual meet. Now I request Dr. Vyas Rao sir to take over the session. Over to Dr. Vyas Rao sir. 
yeah good afternoon uh, one and all uh, once again it's an honor uh, to be a speaker uh, in a different mode i mean uh, earlier uh, we used to be physically have a uh, seminar now we are online and uh, specifically you know in a uh, covid situation yeah i mean uh, i know uh, mary stella college uh, perception wise i can say uh, i mean uh, as principal madam has rightly mentioned uh, is last 60 years in education sector and uh, uh, particularly in science uh, and uh, and known for mainly uh, its values and its uh, uh, social contribution and discipline i know uh, last few years particularly uh, last 10 15 years uh, the vision of uh, the institutes is uh, at a different levels uh, uh, every organization has its their own vision but i would say um, uh, these are all uh, some new uh, sort of a you know trps are breaking news sort of a thing Uh, but otherwise uh, truly speaking uh, even when uh, uh, andhra was a joint andhra pradesh uh, i know hardly five or six institutes uh, at state level uh, which are leading institutes uh, which have their own reputation uh, uh, to say for example we know uh, a college in uh, uh, for example guntur a college in vijayawada a college in i would say somewhere in vizag a college in gudivada bhimwaram that's all only i mean these institutes five to six institutes are uh, highly reputed institutes i believe they still uh, uh, maintain that kind of a um, uh, uh, originality specifically uh, which uh, the uh, management thought of it but the uniqueness of uh, i know mary stella college is uh, i mean it's a really uh, appreciable saying that uh, in 1960s itself uh, they have thought of uh, uh, women education women empowerment right today i mean uh, uh, we are talking about all these uh, things but then 60 years back itself uh, they thought of Uh, not only empowerment but is also we all know about the discipline culture and social values i am missing your beautiful green and clean campus in spite of a uh, lot of commercialization has happened in, in the entire city of vijayawada but still uh, mary stella college has still retained that old uh, uh, that uh, complete green and clean and uh, place for playing right you have nice playgrounds so that is still uh, maintained it's not no exploitation of the resources great okay so with this uh, uh, let me start my presentation sir one request sir uh, yes, we will ask dr rajkumar sir just to unmute his video and say hello to the delegates yes. he will be addressing us in the next two days yeah, yeah please yeah. ma'am dr rajkumar sir. Yeah, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for the invitation from my side as well. It is a great start for the event, and I look forward for uh, Vyas Rao's uh, talk as well. And then I yes. think uh, tomorrow, uh, then I would be talking about my part. Thanks for the yes. invitation once again from uh, Stella College and also from uh, Principal Man. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dr. Rajkumar. Thank you, sir. Please. Uh, go ahead with your session sir thank you the topic is about healthcare sector where physics comes into picture here in healthcare sector physics is the input right whether it is a uh, wearable device or whether it is a this image uh, intensifiers or uh, scanners and all right where converting the physical parameters into electrical signals whether it is a one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional whatever the sensing part is the uh, role of where physics then the technology and the analysis comes into picture so i would say this is a area of a multidisciplinary area i am once again thanks to physics department in reminding uh, where we are actually lagging uh, whenever uh, i prepare uh, something of this topic uh, once again i realize that we badly uh, uh, misunderstood uh, the basics uh, and uh, i mean our education 
was always like a passing uh, scoring sort of a thing we ne- we never studied uh, uh, in the perspective of physics chemistry mathematics as a applications point of view yeah so uh, it's a multidisciplinary area please post your questions uh, in the chat box uh, we'll take up at the end uh, generally i conduct the session um, uh, interactive session number 1 number 2 definitely there should be some demonstrations or hands on sessions whenever i do that and at the end of the session i make sure um, uh, there will be a quiz so these three components are definitely there today also we will try to have online uh, so i request the physics department to select uh, best five questions uh, i don't know i may answer i might not be answer dr rajkumar is also there he probably he may answer or maybe any professor of physics department can answer for that matter so but best best five questions uh, i will uh, send some token of gift to all five people that is my evaluation uh, i cannot do hands on session but then uh, yeah i have i have collected some few videos uh, to demonstrate what is these uh, i mean wearable devices and their uh, scope in the market all right so this is all about uh, my today's one and a half hour session all right so uh, i could see uh, a lot of uh, uh, webinars are ha- happening on covid uh, 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 this pandemic situation uh, mary stella college is also conducting i think bio uh, biotechnology department is conducting about uh, uh, the vaccine which is going to be developed uh, is is it uh, a, a solution or not or it is the solution is nearby or not uh, that i mean it's a really uh, uh, research area uh, that's why it is also called as a novel uh, a novel is novel means it's a, uh, i think raj dr rajkumar will rightly we will present you that what is the novelty in this virus but in short term i will say it, uh, the one which is changing its behavior every time right i mean in, in every research we always say that uh, what is the novelty in your uh, research work so similarly the virus itself time to time is uh, that's what i feel i mean is changing its pattern uh, that is the worrisome worldwide that uh, whatever is the vaccine is going to be developed uh, will it be a solution if the virus pattern itself is changing time to time i mean uh, that is something which uh, probably dr rajkumar uh, or maybe the biotechnology webinar can give you right answers but then uh, I, i would like to say that uh, what are the lessons from this uh, pandemic situation uh, we all know particularly culture 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 is something where we used to even pray to our environment we used to pray to our plants we used to pray to our rivers right i mean that is what is the indian culture but you look at the right side of the uh, screen where uh, this woman she is from kolhapur in maharashtra is selling some small uh, the stone made uh, uh, things but then uh, uh, people are appreciating because of our uh, uh, discipline uh, she is wearing a mask uh, she is having a hand sanitizer she is uh, wearing uh, uh, the gloves though it is not affordable to her but then it is of the sensitiveness towards the other people right when the norms are there norms are for you right it's generally we say rules are for others <laughs> it's not like that rules are for us so uh, i mean that kind of a discipline and sensitiveness is very very important uh, probably uh, uh, that only can save us all right so this is all about uh, i would say some new normal uh, we have to learn Uh, the left side uh, person is from kamam district he is a padma shri awardee 2017 uh, he is awarded padma shri is because selflessly he has planted thousands of trees throughout his life without uh, expecting any money or anything so he was awarded a, i think um, some ramaya i believe his name and uh, so uh, the lesson i would say is all about uh, it's uh, are you sensitive towards your environment or not that's all as simple as that otherwise the environment itself will correct but the other worry some is about uh, the uh, reality the future the future is that uh, the economical war 
right today uh, i mean uh, uh, the top countries right there is no physical war there is no war physically because of military is present but the war is happening economically people are uh, attacking the other countries so some people believe that this virus is a man made virus right and uh, it's economical war they, they they are they have see for example what is the difference between software virus and hard, uh, the human virus the software virus is a human created virus isn't it the people who are developing the antivirus is only developing the virus so that they will get a business as simple as that similarly the pharmaceutical companies or the companies who are manufacturing the drugs uh, there is a theory that they are the people who are also making the virus a uh, human virus and so on so whatever but the reality is that one theory says that it is a human created virus the virus is not a natural virus which is coming from the environment it is a human created one theory but second theory says that you started eating everything whichever is visible to you all creatures i mean this is uh, something which is a uh, once again against the environment where uh, right uh, you know what you are what is your human what what is things which you can digest what, what, which are the things which are harmful to you without applying all these natural uh, formulas right you 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 are creating the problems to others but in both the cases who is the culprit we are the culprits right so i would say we have disturbed the environment uh, that's why i i i am keep on saying that this entire education is all about be sensitive towards the environment all right so this is all about uh, the new normal uh, you you can see the bottom side of the screen the new normal uh, you all must be aware of this uh, one of the app is developed by government of india arogya setu app i am sure every one of you might have downloaded this app this app shows you how close you are to a uh, covid patient right that, that uh, believing that the data is correct otherwise also nowadays people are not uh, getting the data entered but otherwise yes uh, we believe that data is correct in that case it shows you how close you are then the rest of the things like you know thermal sensors uh, pulse oximeter Uh, these are the topics which we are going to discuss in the today's talk what is called hand held portable devices which are now has become a uh, i would say mandatory or a uh, minimum requirement uh, in every place worldwide uh, just to at least to uh, know whether you are a normal or a abnormal okay so uh, as uh, uh, i was told about my company and all these things nowadays um, uh, beyond my company my our focus is on developing uh, these uh, product development center in in the bhavan's campus andheri itself uh, we have g plus 3 uh, right building we had about the product development center so along with me some 40 more companies are there so my job is to uh, help them in developing their products and they are also getting some seed money so these are some benefits i mean uh, if anybody is interested in starting your own company uh, please welcome uh, there is a very good uh, eco system is there and uh, you have a chance of getting up to 50 lakhs is a uh, please remember 50 lakhs is a non refundable money so we are funding uh, even up to that up to 50 lakhs uh, to the startup companies uh, but otherwise also uh, if you have uh, a potential background required skills uh, there is a possibility of uh, getting some scholarships or some uh, be involved in those uh, online projects okay fine so um, as uh, principal madam has rightly mentioned about uh, role of science we misunderstood uh, that's what i was uh, trying to say that we misunderstood the science we misunderstood the technology this is my perception um, in 50 years right uh, 50 years for example uh, when we studied uh, uh, let us say i studied my school in 1970s uh, and uh, college in 80s 
but then uh, we popularly known for uh, grinding machines uh, in telugu we say uh, rubbud roll right or uh, no any physics formulas chemistry formulas we used to uh, grind grind it for two three days right the theorems the formulas the definitions just remember 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 right we used to grind it rubbud roll we used to call that was that kind of education we used to have but uh, in today's uh, uh, technical terms it is called uh, blooms in blooms taxonomy it is called level 1 so our entire education was only level 1 out of six levels we were we were we have done only level 1 of only just re reproduce the things right just uh, remember reproduce in the exam so it's a, just like a exam oriented things uh, the kind of importance we had given to science i mean it's a really unfortunate then uh, today's generation uh, i think probably you might have heard about uh, um, the infosys chairman or a uh, chairman of wipro they might have spoken several times uh, is uh, in spite of lot of coaching is happening lot of uh, no uh, uh, this hand holding is happening but still it is all about a solution to a problem you are all you are all this entire generation education is all about you are coached that yes uh, uh, for to a formula uh, what are the things to be applied right a solution to a problem if there is a problem there is a solution that's all this is how the entire education is happening but it is never happening that what is the problem where the problem is coming from this kind of education is not happening i believe that is where uh, the in the bloom's taxonomy what is called analyzing creating evaluating the top most three things are still not happening i would say that is the reason where i i believe the government of india after 50 years now they had given a right direction to all, all institutes specifically institutes of autonomous institute university saying that national educational policy 2020 right uh, let we will we will talk about it so in that direction if you carefully look at probably our education system will be at uh, may reach up to this uh, the top level of the bloom's taxonomy so uh, finally the, it is a what, what we called as a outcome based education it is not just a producing the degrees it is not outputs how many degrees we have produced how many pointers we have scored is not important what is important is about the employability how many uh, Uh, patents i had given to my country how many uh, inventions we have given how many products we have given to our society so this is all about outcome based education which some countries have already done uh, I, i would say 20 years back but now we are we just started thinking in that direction all right so in short uh, i would say uh, it is like agriculture right the way we have uh, we have taken agriculture though our two third of the population is depends on the agriculture but once again uh, unstructured agriculture right ours is unstructured agriculture no planning nothing today if a onion is a, a very very demand or high price next year everybody will start uh, harvesting onion so the price will come down drastically like anything same thing ha happening to tomatoes or you know or maybe the uh, chili and all so the same thing is done in science and technology without any planning without any outcome based education uh, the, if you are born as if you are born for an engineer as if you are born for a doctor that is how last 20 30 years you know um, the social perception has happened and then this uh, right uh, like you no know, uh, mushroom sort of a thing n number of uh, engineering colleges and management colleges has opened today there is no uh, absolutely no there is no takers for engineering and technology as well as management courses and now once again people started thinking that lot of demand believe me in mumbai there is a lot of demand for science uh, uh, colleges as compared to engineering colleges i am saying as a head of the institute i am saying in mumbai itself it is a one of the top most industrial place uh, there is a scope tremendous scope for science uh, streams rather than technological streams there are several reasons for that i think this is not the right forum maybe sometime uh, some other time we can discuss all right 
so uh, uh, similarly i was telling about the role of the institutes and role of the faculty faculty are no more a, a just a time table or a syllabus uh, uh, executing people right government of india has also realized saying that uh, part of the incubation even faculty should play an important role in research because every student they they will be there only for a period of 2 or 3 years but if you wish that research to be completed or if the research to be converted into a product then that has to be taken care by some faculty then only a batch 1 will do for example a prototyping batch 2 will do some proof testing and so on then finally after the third batch it may convert into a product form so uh, the objectives are changing even iits uh, when they started they started with a different objectives but now we all uh, they have given a mandate saying that all the iits focus should be on pg programs not ug programs so saying that now they should produce more patents and uh, uh, as well as the products so that thing is changing i hope uh, I I even the industry indian industry focus is also changing Uh, we always focused on our domestic needs we we never thought of internationally supplying our products we always thought of our own needs our own agriculture needs our own healthcare sector but now uh, we all know japan korea china they have 2020 years they have taken a role at national international level hopefully after post covid maybe uh, we have a better chance so it is our time i would say Uh, the people who are uh, can really think of as a incubation centers or a startup companies or a uh, uh, if you have something to patent you have a better chance this time okay uh, uh, in internationally also if you see uh, i would say uh, where they have failed right uh, we all know national semiconductors is known for the first company who manufactured the transistors IBM we know the first company who manufactured the computers Intel we know uh, the first company who has manufactured the microprocessors all of them have given up their business National Semiconductors has sold out uh, to Texas Instruments IBM has given up manufacturing the computers even servers also they have given up now they are going to IT IT solutions and the cloud based solutions Intel no more manufactures the CPUs for the mobile phones and embedded systems and so on except one or two products they have so they are also diversifying from this business so what is the learning the learning is for example this is a competitive world there are dead ends say uh, for example you all my, as a physics student i am sure you all know about uh, uh, moore's law right moore's moore's is a american scientist uh, he predicted 50 years back saying that uh, the kind of integration in uh, ics will double after every 16 months that's what he has predicted in terms of integrating integrating means the size of the transistor uh, day by day will shrink i mean that is that is a prediction and it is true also right till 2020 uh, when you talk about the semiconductor materials it was happening right the people are used to reduce the size of the Uh, silicon wafer thickness of the wafer size of the transistor and so on it was happening but there is a dead end there is a dead end is because of after that it is not possible if you use if you still use silicon or so there as a, a semiconductor material to manufacture these ics no more you can integrate that's a dead end because of its own property of the uh, atom atomic structure and so on so what you what how will you improve the performance after 2020 how will you improve the performance of the computers this is where i would say where once again right 100 years back the person who talked about a physicist who talked about the materials semiconductor materials now once again I, we are talking about maybe 50 60 years the people who talked about quantum physics people who talked about the photons now we are saying that quantum computers now we are so saying that photonic computers now we are saying that brain computers neuroscience artificial ne neurons in ics right the behavior of the neuron we would we would like to fabricate in a ic what we call as artificial intelligence isn't it we have a natural intelligence 
and now we are saying that uh, the new the behavior of the neuron we would like to put it in a ic saying that artificially intelligence so what is that this is all about once again we are going back to the school and trying to understand the physics quantum physics photonic physics neuroscience and so on or maybe a new materials new properties of the materials and so on so uh, i would say that once again physics technology they are not two different things it is that is the reason where you know uh, if you if you talk about for example singapore if you talk about maybe some other countries it it is called school please try to understand technology is not a engineering uh, something like that they they still call it a school of uh, science and technology that means science is different technology is different absolutely no the world's top most universities if you see they are called school of science and technology isn't it so these are not two different things if you if you if you if you if you uh, avoid uh, one part then the other part definitely doesn't succeed that's all so and and new uh, we we know that now i hope uh, right i mean uh, you can see the innovation ladder at worldwide also uh, we are at 52 level last 5 years 5 years back we are at somewhere at 80th position 100th position in the innovations we have reached globally up to 50 positions so that itself is a commendable job hopefully in coming 3 to 4 years we hope to come in the top 10 positions even the economically also uh, uh, we are a now a trillion dollar uh, trillion dollar uh, uh, we are a uh, budget budgeted country earlier right uh, we are uh, somewhere Uh, a billion dollar now we have reached to a trillion dollar hopefully we will be in top 6 to 7 but please try to understand economy of a country depends on the technology not just because of your agriculture or any other uh, cement or uh, any other products or uh, cotton absolutely no economy is only because of the technology you will be surprised to know that us is the world's top most uh, country when it comes to uh, economy the trillion dollar economy but then if you carefully look at two third of their economy is only because of three to four companies only three to four companies turnover is the economy of usa that itself says that who is uh, i mean uh, uh, running the country right the industry is running the country yeah fine so this is what i would like to say saying that uh, the wall between science and uh, engineering or technology uh, we have to break it uh, and i hope uh, uh, even our mhrd government of india has realized so they have come up with a ro uh, road map of 2020 uh, some uh, right uh, they are given some guidelines so if you quickly look at these guidelines Uh, as you can see i was keep on saying emphasizing conceptual understanding uh, i i was telling that we used to do at uh, blooms level 1 that means only rather than rote learning and learning for exams this is what we used to do it rote learning Lo rote learning means only remember the things that no more will help you have to understand and critical thinking and creativity this is all about the future this is the only future i would say uh, will save our uh, not only education system and our country otherwise our job our our degrees are unemployable please remember that okay so similarly uh, they also said that uh, multiple pathways multiple pathways means don't think that science physics you are only born as if for physics you are only born as if for a chemistry you are born as if for technology absolutely no right uh, probably after right school education you may think that oh no 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 this is no more my uh, interest area then i can change my field i can switch over to something else but unfortunately for years we have lot of barriers saying that oh if you take mathematics you can only do this if you take only biology you can only do this if you do this if you do this i mean lot of rules and regulations but now multiple pathways means any time 
you can change your uh, multiple degrees you can obtain and there will be multiple outcomes so bringing back dropouts means for example if i take a drop for example one year i have to get drop i want to work some time in my industry and come back this is taken as a some drawback for years it is it is seen as if some somebody failed candidate or somebody is a drop out student was treated as if some problem problem with the candidate this is unfortunate but now if you see the new education system this is all we have, we 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 have see, we, it is taken as if it is a, a multiple pathways so that you know he can uh, really take the area which he is really interested in so the entire education system is going to change uh, we used to say some 10 years of schooling and 2 years of junior college this academic structure is going to change uh, since uh, mary stella college is also autonomous college and they are already autonomous college last 20 years i am sure uh, i mean they can also uh, you absolutely don't need one uh, you one don't need to wait for uh, somebody to implement if you wish you can implement because it is al already a, uh, approved by a majority guidelines where now if you see right side new academic structure everything is a school now right that means now you are in a school for 12 years 12 years you are in a school no junior college are of that type okay so similarly for faculty also there are guidelines uh, what is called uh, right uh, national innovation and startup policy 2019 for students as well as faculty earlier faculty means you you are not supposed to design something you are not supposed to start a business you are not supposed to start a company you are not supposed to join a company so many rules but now no it is mandatory you to join a company right you are deputed you are trained you come back you start your company jointly start with the students so this is all about a new norms i would say in education sector so with this uh, 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 now let me go back once again to the physics saying that in most of the researches we generally make one common uh, mistake saying that you know i, I have improved something right uh, when I, i have seen some research presentation saying that i have created something right i have generated something but we uh, actually the problem even in phd students of uh, uh, engineering they did fail in understanding the first law of the, the thermo the, the thermodynamics after dr albert einstein saying that energy cannot be created they they forget this first fundamental that's what i said we have give we have we have we have lost our basics at least the first thing they should remember always is that energy cannot be created at least that fundamental principle if they remember then their entire research direction will change energy cannot be created it is only converted from one form to other form so people says that oh i have improved the efficiency of my system i, I have reduced the size of the system i had uh, are you are forgetting something right while doing this some other thing is getting affected this is where most of the research fails why our research is unable to convert into products because of this saying that we make lot of assumptions we make a model right which we make a model which works but in reality doesn't work why because we have scaled down we have assumed we have um, uh, carefully uh, avoided some parameters right then saying that so i have improved efficiency of my core size of the code weight of the system and energy of the system and so on but however somewhere else something is getting affected that's what i would say that people forget to understand the first law of thermodynamics in engineering and technology that is the reason why you know most of the researches are only limited to the publications they are not convert into products because when you convert into product then you realize that whatever you have what you have you have done your simulations doesn't work in reality because in reality all real parameters will be there which you have made assumptions while doing your research i hope uh, that is a motivation of uh, uh, any kind of a research uh, why it is not converted into a product forms okay so with this uh, i hope uh, uh, 
uh, uh, enough motivated you though i cannot see, see you physically uh, yeah physics physics is not new like like uh, principal madam has rightly mentioned it is has a history of thousand thousand thousands of years thousands of years uh, this right side diagram this kind of a structure right these bridges old bridges uh, probably uh, you might have seen 100 years 200 years 300 years old structures but uh, by any chance if you go to the southern side particularly tamil nadu or orissa if you see or even some some places in maharashtra or in uh, madhya pradesh uh, if you see some of the structures which are 1000 2000 3000 4000 years structures uh, stone made structures you will find isn't it but then these are all applications of the physics that's what i would say that these are not a new uh, things right new things means probably new theories right maybe electrons or maybe electricity maybe new things but then the uh, the applications of physics is being happening for hundreds and thousands of years so uh, so if you if you don't understand physics you are no more no you are nowhere you, you, that means you, you 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 don't think that you are an engineer or you are a um, uh, doctor and so on all right so i hope i think uh, dr rajkumar will talk about these inventions of physics particularly uh, in his domain so that's why i have taken online saying that uh, last 100 and 200 years uh, for for example maxwell equation see in 9, 1860 maxwell equations maxwell equations today uh, engineering electronics and telecommunication student today when we are talking about 4g 5g but if you doesn't understand Max maxwell equations uh, <laughs> you doesn't know anything you doesn't know anything as simple as that so that is where i would say that the fundamentals of the physics uh, they are very very important even in uh, uh, technology all right so uh, i mean uh, similarly i i spoke about uh, albert einstein his research uh, right uh, and thomson uh, and so on right uh, yeah probably you know we understand the importance uh, in terms of uh, semiconductor materials or uh, maybe right the people who are working in uh, electromagnetic wave theory right everything i would say uh, i mean uh, believe me now we are designing a new syllabus new curriculum being the autonomous institute we are keeping the higher uh, higher semester physics in final year in fourth year we are keeping the physics because we that's what i am trying to say that now science has a major role to play uh, in engineering and technology yeah so uh, i at least i know two famous people vikram sarabhai and uh, homi baba uh, due to vikram sarabhai uh, no uh, the isro right today we are able to send our satellites to mars because of his Uh, is the own baby of starting a uh, space research organization uh, isro similarly uh, homi baba who, uh, who 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 is the one he is a scientist physics scientist who started uh, atomic uh, energy center in popularly in mumbai known as a brc so his uh, maybe his baby now is contributing in so many healthcare sector products x rays and scanners uh, and so on right i mean uh, uh, so i hope uh, uh, my relation that's what i thought i'm i'm just uh, i mean uh, a third fellow third party fellow but being in staying in mumbai uh, i know few research organizations in mumbai one is brc uh, is a excellent research in physics uh, of course there are other domains also tifr tata institute of fundamental research Samir is another central government funded organization which is there in IIT Bombay campus IIT Bombay itself has a excellent physics department and metallurgy departments why i am saying is that these are all interdisciplinary areas they are not only working on physics they are working physics and applications of physics so jointly they are working similarly uh, i know some uh, industry also at least my 
classmates or some people are working in general electricals cements lnt few companies many many companies may be there in healthcare sector but yes they are also the companies who are uh, uh, at least in india uh, they are uh, they are doing some uh, developing some products in healthcare sector the right side technologies and applications is not my domain probably rajkumar may touch okay so why what i am saying is that before i talk about the wearable devices right uh, what are the components of the wearable devices and their impact of the wearable devices please understand the physics the inventions of the physics has a triggered the multiple trends they have triggered in such a way that many many more uh, problem statements has opened up you know mary curie radioactivity you know uh, uh, hessenberg uh, quantum mechanics i was now talking about quantum computers nuclear physics einstein and uh, edison i i quickly picked up uh, sorry i could not uh, collect many people but i am definitely sure that these five people's inventions maybe 100 years old inventions are still today uh, a basics are research problems to many many applications of science and technology okay so similarly medical physics uh, uh, quickly you all know uh, how they have their research 100 years old research is triggered in medical domain x rays uh, resonance uh, uh, radio imaging uh, computer assisted tomography uh, uh, ct scans and so on okay so now this is my domain all right till now sorry if i wrongly quoted or uh, uh, excuse me i only uh, try to understand uh, the applications of physics but henceforth i sure i am sure i don't make any mistakes physics 2014 three scientists of japan they have invented they have invented a led called a blue led okay 2014 that means just 6 years back because of these three physics scientists i am telling you they have saved so much energy worldwide saving the energy itself is called producing the energy i am saying gigawatts of energy they have saved by just inventing a blue light blue led just imagine how what is their contribution that is what i am trying to say that how it, their inventions will trigger to the multiple domains multiple trends so this your tv right everywhere your tv your tv has a led lamp your bulbs are led bulbs wherever you see today led 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 why because till 2014 there was nothing like white led we have only red led green led yellow led but there was no blue led so now this combination of rgb has completed the white led so this research right this physics their research has contributed to saving the environment please understand right carbon how to produce the electricity right how 50% of indian uh, electricity is produced by burning the coal that itself says that uh, how much amount of uh, pollution right carbon dioxide we are saving by just having a led bulb the bottom right side you can see this is a bulb what is called iot bulb right in india wipro is manufacturing you can you can type it wifi bulb wifi bulb is a led bulb which can change multiple colors which can change the intensity but one more thing it can operate through your mobile phone anywhere in the world anywhere in the world so what does it says it says that in 620 rupees you can put a computer inside a led do you understand this right in 600 rupees what is the cost of your computer 30000 rupees right so you can make your computer as a server web server anywhere in the world you can access your server that's what today we are doing online we are able to access our own resources remotely similarly your led bulb from anywhere in the world you can access you can switch on you can switch off you can change the intensity you can set the timing and so on and you can also make a network of led bulbs today led bulb right is a 620 rupees where they are integrating a computer 
web server it is following tcp ip protocol so that is the beauty of technology so that is what i am saying a led just they have invented a blue led but look at the business the kind of business a billion trillion dollar business is happening through iot technologies madam mary curie might have invented some no some uh, right in, in uh, nuclear uh, physics or something like that but today see the healthcare sector there may be some uh, misuse that is a different thing but look at the healthcare sector x rays who has invented their inventions are helping in in uh, in multiple domains okay but then every product has a life every product has a life right you there is a uh, uh, prototyping and then you have to introduce in the market then there is a growth and then it once again it will decline so that is the problem of your inventions you cannot keep on doing the research you cannot keep on right uh, studying the things there is a timeline you have to quickly learn do the literature survey understand and start your research and your research should start from where you are today we always say that your research is on the shoulders of today's researcher from there you have to start isn't it then you have a timeline in order to convert your research into a product form and then quickly you have to make a profit otherwise i, I told you examples of intel ibm uh, national semiconductors and so many companies including nokia where is nokia where is nokia mobile phone nowhere so every product every research has some characteristics you need to understand their quality cost timeline uh, and capabilities so these are all disruptions i uh, you all know probably you might you can understand 3d printers or mobile phones cloud computing and so on renewable energy these are all the technologies uh, what what we call as a disruptive technologies right they disrupt dis, these are disruptions in the market mckinsey has predicted these are the, the 12 technologies which are disruptive technologies what in by disruptive disruptive means they will be there for a shorter period of time they they won't be there they they are exponential in nature they will be there only short period of time quickly you have to make money because some other technology will come and you are gone you are gone you are vanished from the market so that is why with in healthcare also in this wearable devices also this kind of a competitiveness i was telling you about uh, where we have failed we have focused only in the domestic market we never focused on the international market but today we are helpless because this this the market is open you cannot stop you cannot stop china to sell their products right they are still selling people are buying you cannot stop it though they are killing you right they are occupying your lands but still they can sell their products because it is a global market right we have agreed uh, under what is called uh, uh, wto world trade organization we have agreed all the countries have agreed that anybody can sell anywhere in the world so this kind of a competitiveness if you doesn't bring into your system and if you don't look at the features of the uh, the smartness of the other devices then you you cannot compete in the market so this is what has exactly happened why these products are quickly getting vanished obsolete from the market is because of the kind of inventions or i would say not exactly inventions creativeness development is happening in the market uh from the history of uh, the uh, the uh, uh from the past uh, uh, inventions okay so there is another research organization called gartner gartner is a american uh, research uh, company uh, who predicts right this technological trends uh, if you carefully look at 2019 right if you see uh what their prediction is about 5g right if you see 5g virtual reality 3d printing i mean uh, okay so this is all about fine right in 2009 we are all fine we are doing our regular routines everything is okay so this is all in prediction right how long they will be there some of them will be there for 2 years 5 years 10 years and so on okay so this is their expectations and most of the time gartner predictions were uh, successful but in 2020 if you see all of a sudden what has changed see social distancing technologies 
that means today i was talking about this pulse oximeters or the mobile apps or right uh, we were talking about those uh, detection all these things the thermal detection all these things has a, become a very very highest importance in the society all of a sudden has changed the predictions has changed demand has changed but then how many years they will be there only for two years see only you do not have much time you, you, there is a tremendous business lot of scope you you can become a billionaire overnight but then that business will be there for a shorter period of time because by that time some vaccine will come some drug will come this no more will be significant some other thing some other problem may come and your business is gone so health passport you see health passport so new things are coming right ai assistant dna computing right uh, biodegradable technology so these are all now has become a important things for in 2020 because of this pandemic situation okay so i hope why you can understand digital me right beyond silicon i already said beyond silicon silicon is no more a material for manufacturing the ic's or computers and so on so you have to think beyond silicon so these are the new requirements that is where uh, i was telling about this quantum computing or uh, the other uh, things comes into picture right all right so this is all about the i was keep on saying that why do you want to digitize the things because of these reasons right uh, advantage of digital technologies and numerical techniques uh, but then we are at biomedical right i mean whatever we are talking is a uh, healthcare sector is a life critical applications please understand that it is a life and death so there is no question of failure here so naturally there are regulatory authorities are there where it, they need to be certified unless they are certified you cannot release these products in the market so please understand that so maybe one or two due to lack of time quickly i will show you one or two videos uh, and then uh, we'll proceed okay yeah if you have any audio problem let me know through a combination of wearable health monitor technologies telemedicine home diagnosis and even pop-up retail settings healthcare providers have begun to recognize the importance of treating patients remotely in 2014 2.3 billion U.S. dollars was raised for digital health startups. And between 2011 and 2014, 1 1.9 billion U.S. dollars in capital was raised for companies aiming to use predictive analytics. By 2018, 70% of healthcare organizations are expected to invest in medical mobile apps, with an estimated spend of 1.5 trillion U.S. dollars on wearable health monitor technologies and mobile apps. This rising trend of remote healthcare, coined House Calls Plus, has allowed for a more timely administration of treatment for patients at their homes, significantly reducing the cost of intervention, as well as improving the quality of care. Pilot programs are showing excellent results, with one program in the U.S. reducing admission rates to hospitals by 18% for its diabetic population who use remote monitoring and communication, and their readmission rates have also dropped by 31%, all of which reduced costs to the test center by 7%. An alternative to hospital-run healthcare programs is the drive towards patients using wearables and other personalized technologies to receive a variety of readings, which they can directly compare to a number of benchmarks and decide whether or not to proceed to a healthcare professional. Other patients may instead choose to consult health social networks to share information from their automated readings, consult a physician during Q&A sessions, or even seek emotional support. Patients may also use apps to detect a correlation between their condition and medication interactions or bad health practices to make decisions on how to improve their health. For more in-depth testing, patients could also decide to use home kits for personalized genomic services, blood and other biomarker testing, environmental testing, and even predictive biosimulation. Such a style of healthcare is being termed local convenience store. For those who choose to consult a healthcare expert, a number of options may arise that redirect the patients away from the hospital. Retail outlets in common city centers and clinics in remote locations can receive patients, review their information, and decide whether to continue with further care by a physician. 
On-call doctors are also readily available to answer questions and provide healthcare directives through video chat, email, or mobile phones to patients anywhere. Telemedicine has grown exponentially, with 72% of hospitals and 52% of physician groups in the U.S. currently providing such services. And in Ontario, Canada, telemedicine programs have seen an annual growth of about 30% for the past few years. Among the risks associated with advancing personalized technology in healthcare is the belief that technology will take over the role of the doctor. In 2017, 142 million medical and health apps are expected to be downloaded and an estimated 65% of consumer healthcare transactions are to be made using mobile devices. Nevertheless, hospitals and healthcare professionals will still be at the forefront of all treatment plans, especially in unique cases. Therefore, the new dynamic of doctor-patient relationships requires new collaborations and business models, as well as a revised understanding of healthcare companies' role in the value chain. What will our healthcare system look like in 2050? We have identified three drivers that we believe will be at the core of our future healthcare system. Health data connectivity, machine, artificial intelligence and human integration, and ecosystems of wellness. How do we see these drivers playing out in the current healthcare environment? We are witnessing a transition away from our traditional business-driven economy, which is built on mass production, cost reduction, focused models and analysis intensive reactive healthcare interventions. From here, we envisage that we will move toward a people driven economy underpinned by mass personalization, revenue resilient models, and design heavy proactive healthcare interventions. Individuals are more informed about health and wellness through on demand access to data and empowered through a greater availability of service options such as GP clinics, home doctors, and online video consultations. The connectivity has triggered a shift in their healthcare priorities toward prevention, wellness and maintenance. In the future, we envisage people-driven healthcare that is seamless, flexible, tailored and puts the individual at the centre of decision making. We will observe a shift from bricks and mortar services to on-demand in-home services. What will cause the decentralization and personalization of our healthcare system to accelerate shifting services out of the hospital and into the community and the home? How will we manage individual safety and quality of care across hospital, community and in-home health services? We believe data and digital solutions such as the electronic health record will shift to an overall lifestyle and wellness record that is integrated into individuals day to day lives through real time monitoring. We envisage that each individual will have their own personal health dashboard that is linked to their smart tattoo with built-in data analytics that can predict health outcomes, trigger alerts and provide tailored recommendations. 
these dashboards would be accessible in the home and via mobile applications, enabling general practitioners and family members to monitor their well-being. What will this mean for privacy and confidentiality of patient information? Untapped opportunities exist in population health data, which is currently compiled through various independent sources. In the future, we believe individuals' health dashboards will feed data into population health dashboards that are able to be filtered and investigated, such as by geographical location and health trends. These insights will enable interventions that promote health and prevent illness. In maintaining population health and well-being, health funds may offer to subsidise part of people's fees if they partake in regular health-enhancing activities to lower their chances of disease and illness. Will this trigger a shift in onus from the healthcare system to individuals for maintaining personal health? With the exponential rise of robotics and artificial intelligence, routine tasks are increasingly being automated. PwC's 20th Annual Global CEO Survey revealed that while CEOs are keen to maximise the benefits of automation, finding the skills they need to do this has become the biggest threat to their business. In the future, we believe robotics and artificial intelligence will be fully integrated in our hospitals and beyond them. People and technology will work together more seamlessly to meet the needs of the patient rather than removing people from the healthcare system. This will range from the automation of simpler administrative tasks to AI solutions that interact with people, learn and have the ability to undertake more intricate activities. Complex operations will become less intrusive, more accurate and quicker with reduced patient wait times, faster recovery and improved health outcomes. Artificial intelligence will support clinicians in making more accurate and rapid diagnoses with access to instantaneous test results. What impact will these advancements in technology have on the human element of clinician to patient care? Will individuals have the choice to opt out of interacting with health technologies? What new skills and roles will be needed in the healthcare sector as a result of these new health technologies? In exploring Australia's current healthcare system, we are confronted by a multitude of opportunities, shifting service offerings, changing expectations and emerging innovations that are poised to disrupt the traditional and conservative foundation on which it is built. We recognise that the purpose of exploring the future of our healthcare system is not to consider all of these concepts individually, but to raise, reflect on and analyse the integration of possibilities that are beyond our current reality. Yeah, all right then. So, uh, I mean, this is just for a some sort of animation to understand uh, the business models in healthcare sector. Uh, probably, no, uh, mainly countries like US, Australia, uh, Europe, uh, healthcare sets, uh, sector itself is a trillion dollar uh, business. The, uh, all the, uh, you all can understand, I hope you also must be reading the news. Uh, election news of USA and so on. Uh, healthcare uh, is taken care by the government itself because you know uh, I mean that is the part of their taxes what they are charging from the employees. So they have to take care of this thing. So these are all business right for them. If, uh, healthcare itself is a huge trillion dollar business. Probably in India it is still considered as a uh, welfare, but uh, in other countries it's a uh, uh, I mean, uh, the big, big companies are involved in healthcare. Yeah, I hope I have some few more slides. Uh, I hope uh, if I overshoot 10 more minutes, uh, there should not be any problem. Otherwise, let me know. Uh, each slide, I require at least one hour to speak, but I'm going to complete in one minute. So please excuse me uh, if I'm, I'm not explaining the entire slide. Uh, because I'm supposed to explain this slide one hour, each slide, but I'm finishing in one minute. So I, I need to only highlight uh, the, some important things. Okay, so yeah, what are the wearable devices? Wearable devices are the one where uh, in day-to-day -day life, say for example, today I'm carrying this, right, pulse oximeter. I'm a, I'm a, uh, right now, I'm at a remote place of uh, Andhra Telangana border. 
where the population is only hardly 2000 people uh, i do not have electricity right now uh, but still you know <laughs> uh, I, I, i could i could get the world's best portable device through online right from anywhere in the world that's what i was trying to tell you about the competitiveness if you wish you can get from anywhere in the world what is the cost of the pulse oximeter 1000 rupees 1000 that's all but you have to compete worldwide in terms of features in terms of cost and so on similarly i am also carrying not now for several years blood glucose meter i am i am a diabetic i am carrying what is the cost only 1000 rupees 1000 rupees a portable handheld battery operated system i don't need to go to a pathology lab to test my blood i can do it in this remote village also i am carrying uh, for uh, last 2 years blood pressure monitoring system a, a handheld battery operated blood pressure <laughs> don't think that i have uh, all the diseases uh, just like that you know uh, i mean see these these products please understand people are buying just for enthusiasm today people are buying smart watches right what is the cost of a smart watch 7 to 8000 rupees i mean our own indian company hmt company hyderabad company we have killed when the hmt watch was costing 500 rupees nobody was buying today people are buying 7 to 8000 rupees digital watches right uh, just as a passion because it will show you your bp it will show your sugar it will show you right uh, how many calories you are burning and so on as a some enthusiasm it's not that really they are helping your health but yes people people want that is a business so you are supposed to manufacture all right so can you imagine that whether it is required not required useful not useful but there is a demand so what are the products products are as you can see uh, ecg eeg blood pressure and uh, some emg and now today people are talking about pulse oximeter because in this covid situation though your temperature may be okay right that doesn't uh, uh, indicate what indicates is your oxygen level saturated oxygen level in your body so that is i am truly saying that this is where physics comes into picture you will surprise to know that more as madam has rightly mentioned most of these instruments their input the sensing is coming from the fundamentals of the physics for example simplest technique which is used in pulse oximeter is about the reflectivity of the light absorption of the light as simple as that probably you know in engineering also in first year engineering we still do this experiment in physics lab of the laser and light intensity we have a dark room we are supposed to make some dark room and so on so can you imagine ki what is the importance of these sensors in the healthcare sector once you have a right input yes then that is where the technology comes into picture we are converting the signal into digital numbers communicating displaying cloud based analysis all those fancy things comes into at a later stage but first you need to sense them you need to convert them into a electrical signal your biological motions generated potentials you are supposed to first acquire them i mean that is where uh, the physics plays an important role i hope now you can understand the complete ecosystem uh, due to lack of time i am not focusing more on the technological part but otherwise uh, in the animation itself uh, we have shown you where this business model right the corporate comes into picture and the doctors comes into picture patients comes into picture devices comes into picture it services comes into picture this is a very very trillion dollar industry is because uh, i mean uh, in countries like uh, you no know, as i said these are developed nations healthcare is a part of their uh, country's budget because government is supposed to take care of the health uh, health care of the people all right but then today in front of me all physics students are there but then please understand this you and i are not two different things 
right though uh, i have done uh, my physics maybe in 1970s but as i said if given a chance i would like to once again join the college because i am not i have not done my schooling properly i have not understood the importance of these subjects but now i am realizing that without these things where, where the applications comes into picture for me technology all these things i am done i am done i can understand i don't take much time but once again understanding the basic principles of physics for me you know it is taking time when dr little flower has asked me to speak in physics first i i will start sweating i have to sweat because you know you people can catch me easily that oh you don't understand so and so formulas i mean it's like that i'm really sorry no it's 50 year after 50 years also i i still have that fear i still get that nightmares as if i i failed in physics i failed in chemistry i failed in maths i still get that is how we have done the education we only remember the things to reproduce in the exam we always use get a tension do i still remember the formulas till i go to the exam section i exam hall and reproduce there on the paper it's always a tension that is why i still remember now also i can see students carrying the books till the examination hall just to remember the formula they still read it but if you understood if you know how to apply then why to remember no you don't need to remember you don't need to study last one day one should not study for exams that kind of confidence when will you have when you really understood the uh, fundamentals fundamental concepts anyhow so please understand that i am sure you know the electromagnetic spectrum you understand the signals you understand the frequency you understand the wavelength you understand the amplitude so you and i are not two different things whether it is a biomedical signal or a electromagnetic signals both are signals please understand they are signals only the source is different in this case the source is coming from a human body and there they are coming maybe from a nature Th that's all or maybe a produced by some uh, as uh, einstein has said conversion of energy from one form to the other form okay so in short these are all signals either 1d signal 2d signal and 3d signals i hope you all can understand one dimensional signals are all what we are talking about biomedical signals where their uh, right uh, uh, a, their amplitude is changing so they have a one variable 2d signals means you all know image right i think dr rajkumar will talk about these image uh, related uh, medical applications 3d uh, is something to do with the video because it is not only the coordinates of the position of the pixels but it is also the frame right for which frame this is a third variable people are also talking about 4d in future and so on right they are, they are adding some more uh, variable in the uh, spatial positions okay but then today our topic is of, of biological signals you all I, i hope i mean at least the basics uh, of science uh, uh, you might have studied that uh, ecg electrocardiogram is a signal i hope you know the nature of the signal pqr a signal where what you can see is that this signal where it is coming it is coming from the heart right it is a, a because of the chemical mechanical process of your human body your human body is producing these signals right so as a as a as a researcher what is your duty you you need to capture these signals right you have to design a system a sensor a amplifier in order to pick up these signals that is the that is our role that is a science science student role uh, just on the right side i have shown you one potato right bangal dumpa bangal dumpa also can produce some electricity you can see some videos online videos how this uh, potato can generate electricity right just if you have uh, some zinc and uh, some copper right these leads insert into the potato whatever is the electricity produced by a potato can you imagine i mean you you are surprised to see that human is producing this voltage right but i am saying potato is producing this voltage so this voltage is good enough to drive a ic you can see right the a, a, a cpu a ic integrated circuit this potato can drive that much power is there inside that potato so 
yes so this is all because of your chemical mechanical or some right uh, mechanism is producing your human body so ecg as you can see the shape pqrst thousands millions of researchers have done published lot of papers of about this ecg ecg analysis ecg prediction ardhmias detection and so on so lot of research is done but today they have become a product please understand right your heart your heart uh, signal is being captured by a smart watch believe me this i have done in 2003 i mean uh, today i am a fool i am literally a fool in 2003 i have done i have i have done that's what dr uh, uh, madam has introduced me uh, actually i have not given this bio data i, I have reduced my bio data actually i have days i am writing only two lines but uh, madam little flower is so kind she was searching right what i have done in the past so she dig the entire website and collected the information but i am feeling shame because in 2003 i have done this work in 1992 i have done this work in ecg but i have not patented my work believe me whatever the work which i have published i have done in washington dc in world's top 6 i have rated in 6 in the world that's what she highlighted washington dc awarded me the best uh, uh, work uh, uh, at an uh, international level in 2003 Uh, but i didn't patent it that today you see it is a billion dollar industry ibm is manufacturing these uh, ecg analyzers which are portable handheld putting in watches and so on if i would have patented that time today i, I might have become a millionaire or a billionaire no this is what the all indians are doing unfortunately we are known for uh, kindness we are known for generalization we are known for education but we are not a business people right that's the problem with us we are not good business people so time has changed now economy is depends on your patents how many patents you have that's the problem so yeah so ecg is a lot of research has been done now it is available in watches this ecg amplifier similarly brain waves you all can understand a brain waves is uh, alpha beta theta they are not very very high frequency signals they are very very low frequency signals which are uh, being uh, available in the market what is called bci that means brain computer interface similarly the blood pressure monitoring and the uh, these blood oxygen level monitoring right these are all available in terms of devices i think uh, I, i already overshooted let me take another 10 minutes to quickly introduce you about these devices in covid situation one is called infrared thermometer so without talking about the technology what is the most important thing is infrared radiation ir waves right this ir waves you are actually collecting please remember you are not generating these infrared waves if a human body is emitting these ir waves you are only collecting them so this thermopile what it is doing it is converting this ir waves into heat and then heat is connected convert into uh, voltage so that is a thermocouple so it's called that's why it's called thermopile why thermopile is because probably you might have seen this pir sensor right wherever right, in toilets and all we use it whenever a human being goes there right this sensor will sense and automatically switch on or switch off the lights so the same principle is used in this infrared thermometers which are we, while maintaining the distance i am able to measure your body temperature is because your body is emitting the ir radiation and that ir radiation is changing based on your body temperature so that i am collecting i am focusing collecting convert into heat and convert into voltage so in physics form what am i doing doing i am only able to design a circuit i hope this is what probably we do it in physics concave convex and the types of uh, uh, light sources and then focusing and converting into voltage and so on the same principle only thing is here it is a ir light similarly ecg amplifier already spoke uh, in 1992 itself this circuit which i have published at a national level uh, this thing 
in 1992 itself i was asked to uh, uh, some company has approached me sir we want to buy this design i said what is there to buy i said i said you use it no what is there to buy i already published that uh, national level that is what i am saying i am a fool because if if you have done a, some good research work you are not supposed to publish you are supposed to do patent if publish means it is open anybody can use it then i said that i already published i said that you don't need to pay me you use it but then anyhow now what i am saying is that this circuit now you don't need to make differential amplifier filters high pass filter low pass filter all that stuff it is available in a one single ic form that is a meaning of system on chip soc ics so ecg entire ecg grabbing you don't need to make build the circuits it is available in ic form simple ic form so these are some features of that ic similarly eeg i told you about this brain computer inter interface not only in healthcare sector not only the people who are uh, the neurologist but it is also has uh, become a uh, right virtual reality right so, so many uh, brain waves people are no more talking about a remote based applications people are talking i am thinking the device should work so thinking i am thinking the thinking waves should be converted and communicated and control something right the robot should be controlled my tv should be controlled because i am thinking so this alpha beta theta delta these waves right i am supposed to amplify it that means first what are the characteristic of my amplifier it should have a very very high cmr uh, cmrr it should have a very very high input impedance and then it should have a very very low offset at the input so it has its own requirement but uh, interestingly it is something you can understand very easily it is a very very low frequency signal see 1 to 4 hertz is delta 4 to 8 hertz is theta 8 to 12 hertz is alpha and 12 to 30 hertz is a beta so that means after all you have to you have to understand 1 hertz to 30 hertz that's all that is the frequency where you have to deal with very very low frequency signal but those are the brain waves which are now the whole world the entire uh, business right people are working on the brain waves because the futuristic device is all about uh, i mean thinking and thinking the things should that's why i told you, you know the 4d four dimensions 4d is because emotions thinking so that may be probably the my fourth direction 4d uh, modeling myograms right is because of your uh, uh, what do you say your muscle uh, movements uh, i hope you can understand all these exercise machines the sports people they uh, are nowadays it has become a common problem after 40 years the muscle problems the right your uh, knee problems right so a, a amplifier a simple amplifier where based on the uh, right your muscle contraction where it will generate a waveform you have to just simply adjust a differential amplifier and a filter that's all right you can you should be able to pick up the it will tell you the movement of your muscles so uh, electro uh, myogram now i was telling you about this um, oximeter pulse oximeter as you can see red uh, led which is emitting you have to detect and you have to amplify you have to display it so forget about the uh, technology part but basically this is all about uh, i was telling that converting the light absorption right based on the oxygen level of your body where uh, your light absorption is changing so that signal you have to detect it as simple as that that means you are emitting the light and you are detecting the light and how much light is being absorbed is telling you what is the oxygen level of your body saturated oxygen level is uh, is which is converted into a signal based on your light uh, emitting uh, light is emitting but light detection similarly the blood pressure what is a blood pressure blood pressure means basically you can see the wave form where right uh, you have a what is called systolic pressure and a diastolic pressure that means a positive peak and a negative peak so in short what you require is a pressure sensor i hope you all can understand a sensor which will sense the for example a diaphragm diaphragm itself is a act as a pressure sensor so a pressure i hope you know gram phone 
the hope people who have seen gram phone what is it is doing right you are you are you are putting some needle to the diaphragm and when the needle is moving on the disc right based on the shape of those uh, uh, tracks where your needle is hitting the diaphragm so that's what you are converting into some sound waves so in short it is more or less same a pressure based on the pressure which is applied the pressure of your uh, veins you are actually converting to a waveform so a pressure sensor is the one which is converting as you can see but then traditionally a doctor is applying the pressure right he 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 has some cuff cuff with a ball he is pressing something and he is injecting and then is a is a, is this called mechanical it's a mechanical system but today what you have this handheld portable system there is a motor right as you can see what you require is a motor and the motor is switching on switching off the valve so this air pressure applying the pressure releasing the pressure is a small transistorized motor driven circuit as simple as that otherwise who is sensing the pressure is all about your pressure sensor which is converting this pressure into a electrical signal and then you are measuring the peak positive peak and negative peak that's all so this already said that uh, it is all basically i hope you might have heard about the beers la lambert's law which is all about the absorption of the light based on the saturation level of the blood so you can see the i hope you can understand the wavelength of the red light wavelength of the ir led and then uh, based on your uh, saturation level this wave is either right you I hope you can see based on the wavelength it is absorption right if if if, you, if your oxygen level is very very low 0% then you see uh, what is absorption level if your 100% oxygen level is there you can see the red uh, uh, wave form where absorption is very very high so i mean this what it, it indicates that uh, you are actually converting the reflection you can see this is where you can see one side you are emitting the light other side you are detecting the light and so if you are absorbing if it is reflecting back then the nature of the output is something else if it is actually transferring it is a transparent then the amplitude of the signal is something else so uh, abnormal in a covid situation abnormal means uh, uh, below 90% is all abnormal normal means somewhere above 95% so that means the your blood saturation of the oxygen is that is called spo2 is at what level but then what i am saying is that this all something to do with your physics of the wavelength waves reflection absorption so similarly the ventilators i know ventilator is not a portable device but please understand ventilator is costing 4 to 10 lakhs the tremendous demand is there worldwide to make a ventilator which is a portable device the way today we are carrying this bp monitoring system the industry is expecting the same thing should happen same size a ventilator should be there less than a, a lakh of rupees that is the tremendous potential is there to do the research but what is the ventilator is doing just feeding the oxygen and taking out the carbon dioxide simple principle just two valves one is feeding the oxygen second is taking out the carbon dioxide just a two mechanical actually it was a mechanical system years back today they made it as such a complicated uh, uh, computerized uh, system so it is a business no finally it is a business but what people require is a simple low cost handheld portable device that is where indigenous comes into picture there is a tremendous potential because they, i mean this is the biggest problem ventilator today if if you if you if in covid situation if you join for a oxygen why people are joining the hospitals just for oxygen because your oxygen level has come down so you have to join the intensive care unit what are they doing just they are feeding the oxygen by by using some controllable system do you know what is the cost of the treatment in mumbai 14 to 18 lakhs per day 1 lakh 1 lakh you are paying for the oxygen and today we do not have value for the oxygen if it is abundant if it is free we are abused the nature 
right and we are paying per day 1 lakh rupees for consuming for few units of oxygen in the hospitals 20 lakhs not less than 20 lakhs bill in mumbai just for feeding the oxygen because in covid corona is actually creating the breathing problem so you are feeding the oxygen in a controllable bot but what what actually we require is a in house also if we have a portable handheld system which is doing the same function is good enough but that's a problem okay anyhow uh, i think uh, i'm already taking your time uh, uh, let me conclude saying that in uh, we also have a uh, uh, right in india we are not doing that but in uh, us europe uh, it is uh, popularly known as a um, uh, this you know uh, insulin injection system right in india we if we, if anybody is a diabetic we we only give the pay, tablets right drugs only we give but in all in other countries you can see is a hand is a portable device it looks like a mobile phone what is this is doing it is actually injecting the drug it is called drug delivery system this is injecting the insulin into your body please try to understand so that means you are measuring your blood glucose levels it is comparing if it is not sufficient if your blood sugar is uh, sugar is falling down this machine is actually injecting the insulin today in india people are injecting manually or they are giving uh, they are taking some drugs but uh, in other nations all developed nations they are using this machine called handheld portable battery operated system which is a closed loop system lot of software lot of research is happening to make it a, a i mean a smart device is because without knowing your blood sugar today we are giving the drugs today we are giving the insulin that means you don't know what is your sugar level but still you are giving the drugs then what is the problem the problem is side effects it may overshoot it may fall down it may happen anything brain damage what it can it, uh, multiple problems but if you have a system which is continuously monitoring what is your sugar levels in the body and appropriately it is controlling how much insulin to be given to your body that is called a closed loop system that is what these developed countries are doing but then there is a another theory saying that this is a business this insulin itself is a business right if you can i, I don't know whether you like it or not today if you do a proper yoga or you can listen to sadguru right some uh, good speakers are there he is from tamil nadu right sadguru right there are so many people who are saying that if you properly do exercises if you take control see blood sugar is changing because of food habits right today in this covid situation right hospitals are closed many of the treatments are closed but still but still still the problems are less only problems are only covid problems other problems are less is because the kind of medicines the kind of drugs people are using more and more unwanted uh, what is called is the antibiotics are creating the side effects so in short i am saying is that it is always better understand and only give not only experiment today what are we doing we are only experimenting you have something i am experimenting on you i am applying something and i am looking at the reaction and i am changing my drug this is called open loop system this handheld portable systems what are they doing they are continuously reading you analyzing you i am not saying it is correct or whatever you can avoid these things with your good habits right your good food habits exercises most of the things can be avoidable but yes as a engineer i am saying that apply by only knowing what is called closed loop today if you can measure your room temperature accordingly you are controlling your air conditioner that is class closed loop system okay so once again this is the uh, you all must be knowing about I already said about this portable uh, watch which is called fitbit see how many heart rate accelerometer walking speed calories distance so many sensors are there fabricated in small watch in india also some companies are manufacturing this but look at the business it is it is uh, the business each each watch is costing 
seven to ten thousand rupees, and people are buying for that. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we are already overshoot. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think you can understand that all these sensors are generating uh, unstructured uh, billions and trillions uh, tetrabytes of data, right? Exabytes of data, right? But the problem is. what will you do with the data when these uh, wearable devices are generating the data what will you do that's a problem so that is where the new subject has come up what is called data science right today science has uh, not only in physics chemistry now science is equally required in data analysis right that is where the physics uh, also comes into picture where right with a little bit of skills you need to uh, play important role in analyzing the data understanding the data not only collecting the data so this is where i i hope these uh, cloud based platforms or artificial intelligence all these comes into picture because this wearable devices are only displaying the data but there is no analyzing the data and a long term effects over a period of time the right the uh, what is the problem where it will lead whether the patient is in future is going to have a heart attack that the patient is going to have in future is a diabetic so that kind of analysis if you want to do it then you require a long term data it's not possible in a one or two samples so it's not only acquiring the data in a in a portable devices sometimes you require to uh, have a database and analyze the data the data that is where this unstructured censored data you have to do sort of a analysis where data science comes into picture i think i have already overshooted so let me conclude saying that uh, smartphones are also playing a lot of important role your mobile phones there also has become a very very important uh, uh, device in healthcare sector in portable devices because they, they they themselves are having a lot of resources high end computations and uh, unit and then good amount of memory good displays lot of sensors in built lot of healthcare people are actually make using of mobile phones as their computational units because they themselves are having lot of resources and everybody is already having that unit so only just you have to develop a small attachment to this maybe apps like i already given an example in covid people are using the apps just to know right who is having the uh, this problem so it is giving a alarm so and so on so like that you know uh, you can also use these smartphones as a portable handheld device in the healthcare sector i think uh, with this uh, let's not go more technical uh, in short technology is a choice please understand it's a choice which technology to choose skills is uh, is required to understand this technology though you are a physics but please understand uh, uh, what country badly requires is you need to understand what are the applications of physics where physics is used in technology in healthcare sector it is a multidisciplinary area i'm not saying only healthcare wherever whichever is the area of your interest please see that it is not just a physics means it is not not only just to you know uh, remember the definition of these 100 or 200 years course of this legacy of course you should you should remember you should understand that's okay but don't it, it's not the end of the story it is just a beginning after that you need to understand where they are applied where you can use them and then can can i develop can i build uh, some something new but i am not saying creativity inventions doesn't happen every time in uh, einstein's won't be there no uh, in every 10 years no they won't be there inventions happens very very rarely you tell me in last 20 30 years how many inventions happened hardly few we can only count on the fingers they has happened years back but now that kind of inventions doesn't happens but what happens is applications it's called applied so you have to look at the applications of the physics in uh, different areas yeah my videos are there on online maybe mainly related to technology what is called mtron technologies so my focus is all about uh, maybe some product developments for industry and uh, um consultancy and of course corporate training okay i think <laughs> sorry for taking lot of time of yours uh, yeah i have overshooted yeah i am done so thank you so much sir
it's a very informative talk you have given we know that this field is a vast field you need more time to explain everything but you have given your talk which highlighted many things especially eminent scientists contributions in physics and then their findings you said and your video expressed that how health care industry in 2050 how it would be then you said you have still have passion for physics and if all the concepts if you had learned well you would have excelled in the, currently also you are excelling a major role you would have played in in your industry creating products with the embedded systems and uh, very beautifully you said how you were very innocent uh, to keep all your data in the form of a research article uh, without uh, claiming for patent right how you miss great opportunity to become a billionaire or trillionaire and very beautifully you said the education to remember and reproduce just to get marks is waste wasting of one's life itself instead you said you get inspired to innovate instead of publish or perish that statement you just recoin make a product and claim a patent right though the products may not uh, stand for longer time but it gives you good money so you suggested that learning alone is not enough you need to have corporate thinking to promote your products actually we need more time to listen to such talk in the shortest time you have covered physics to embedded systems and healthcare and its services using embedded systems on behalf of all delegates of this webinar and behalf of the department members and maristella management i take this opportunity to thank you wholeheartedly for your support to be the resource person in this webinar we are very sure that your support will be always for us not only for us for everyone who is attending here uh, because you are such a person and you will share your expertise with many so this will go on so i thank you personally very sincerely to you for spending your valuable time with us i thank all the delegates who trusted us and registered yourself in this webinar and participated we appreciate your enthusiasm we admire your effort uh, please in the other two days also you will be given many wonderful ideas so with this let the day one session come to an end i thank you all and i thank our maristella management for giving us permission to host this webinar thank you one and all yeah thank you madam thank you for your great words Thank you sir